Do so. We look forward to hearing you. Thank you, Brian. Come on, that's it. That's it. So, um, I understand that Mr. Trump had to cancel, so we have to. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's it's hard to speak after Chicago. But really? I'll, Why? Uh, I'll be careful next time I sit next to you. Oh. Uh, with all your martial arts background. Right? <laughs> well, um, I'll just tell you what I do now and you know, work my way backwards. Hopefully it will not be too long. Um, so I work for the European Bank for Reconstruction and Development, which is a development bank, obviously. It's a multilateral development bank uh, with shareholders from uh, 67 countries. It is headquartered in London, but the countries we work in are Central Eastern Europe, CIS countries, and SEMED, Southeast Mediterranean. Uh, which means we work from Hungary sort of to Mongolia and from Estonia down to Egypt, or I should say Morocco to Mongolia and Estonia to Egypt, uh, east of Vienna. Um, this uh, bank was founded in 1991 after the fall of the Iron Curtain to help support uh, the former communist countries to uh, transition to market economies and to support the private sector in these countries. And then they added uh, more countries that were like sort of that needed uh, that kind of support, like uh, Turkey, Greece, Cyprus, um, um, Morocco, Tunisia, Lebanon, Jordan, Algeria coming up. Um, but uh, EB EBRD, as they're called, uh, the, the name European, in, uh, it should not confuse uh, anyone with the. Um, I did as an EU institution, it is not. Uh, the name was just there because uh, it was originally founded to support the European ex-communist countries. Um, it is not an EU institution. Uh, we have, uh, uh, our shareholders are US, uh, Japan, India, China, so on and so <laughs> forth. Um, but EBRD is leading in climate finance uh, about 40% of EBRD's business is in climate finance. What that means is EBRD gives loans to private companies and, to, um, and sometimes, uh, rarely, but it does happen to, to states in supporting their um, um, energy efficiency projects, renewable energy projects, and what we call climate resilience, which is usually when you say, okay, it's getting hotter and warmer and drier, so what can we do to to uh, support agriculture, for example, under the circumstances. And I work in that part of the bank. I work in climate finance. Uh, I have projects in Poland, Ukraine, Romania, and Turkey, usually, in my case, by luck, uh, in the residential sector, which means, uh, and it's intermediated finance, which means we loan money to local banks, which then own land to private companies. Uh, and indeed to, to individuals in terms of retail loans for their home renovations or residential building uh, level uh, renovations or green mortgages in, in those countries. So I do travel quite a bit. How I got here, um, I came here from Brussels. My family is based in Brussels. Um, my wife works for the European Parliament, mm. so she will have new um, new colleagues now, I suppose, <laughs> some of them from the Brexit party. <laughs> she interprets, uh, she's an interpreter, so she's not, uh, she's not uh, like uh, in, the, in the running of things. Um, she interprets, uh, she's Polish, she interprets into Polish from English, German, Italian, and French. And she does also the uh, interpretation into English from Polish. Uh, so she's based there with her two children. So I was there in, uh, in some early semi-retirement because before uh, Brussels, I lived in North Macedonia, in Skopje. North Macedonia is a uh, new name. Uh, the former Yugoslav Republic of Macedonia, it used to be called. And I used to run a small bank there. I was the CEO of a small bank in a small country, but a very good life, nice weather. <laughs> And before uh, Macedonia, I, I worked and lived in Romania for 10 years, between 97 and 2000, uh, I'm lying. I, before Macedonia, I was in Netherlands, sorry, <laughs> for a few years, but before that I was in Romania. And I used to be director of internal audit of several banks there. 
Um, and um, I saw the transition of Romania from being this sort of less known, except for Ceausescu and Nadia Comaneci, uh, <laughs> country into uh, the quite a bustling, uh, interesting country, a beautiful country, was the economy, and, uh, and really very nice, friendly, warm people, and good wine, I must say. Um, so, uh, and before Romania, I uh, lived in Istanbul. Um, I graduated from the University of Bosphorus in Istanbul, which is a university which probably was one of the best views as a university campus in the world. It, uh, it's on top of a hill overlooking the Bosphorus, uh, right next to uh, the, the castle of Bosphorus. And uh, I must say, I spent most of my uh, university years down seaside um, <laughs> drinking <laughs> cheap wine and beer, but uh, there's a bit hazy there. But I did study political science and international relations there and had a proper education starting with Plato and Aristotle, which everyone should. And uh, then I, I worked in, uh, in two banks in Istanbul uh, as an internal auditor. But I am not from Istanbul. I am from uh, the Aegean region, which is Western Anatolia. The Aegean Sea is the sea between Greece and Turkey. Yeah. Millions of islands, and I consider myself Aegean, which means uh, I love olive oil. I can distinguish between qualities of olive oil and fish and meze, and I do drink a quite bit of raka. Uh, raka is the Turkish national drink. It's the one that turns white when you add water, uh, same similar to ouzo. Um, but I was not born in Izmir. I was born in a town called Aleshehir, which is slightly further inland. And Aleshehir, the name you may never have heard of, means nothing to you probably, but its older name may ring a bell. It used to be called Philadelphia. Yeah. It is the ancient town of Philadelphia, which uh, means, of course, the city of he who loves his brother, which was founded by the king of Pergamon um, after Alexander the Great's conquests. Um, um, I was born in Philadelphia, and it, uh, of course, it's in the Bible, uh, mentioned very, very nicely. Uh, so they had no sins or nothing to uh, criticize in your Bible. Uh, and there's a church there which uh, was in ruins in my father's years, but uh, he was the uh, president of the school board there, and I just saved it from being uh, sort of further destroyed. So that's his claim to fame. He saved the Church of Philadelphia from uh, collapsing. Uh, it's still there in the city center. It's, uh, it's a Catholic pilgrimage site. But as I said, um, uh, my family owned vineyards there, but my father was a school teacher. But um, I was removed from Malaysia when I was a baby. We moved to closer to the sea, uh, just a few kilometers east of Izmir, to a city called Manisa. Its ancient name is Magnesia, founded by people called the Magnets, and I don't need to tell you what they discovered. Um, and then we moved to, uh, to Izmir, which is a very cosmopolitan city, ancient Smyrna, which was a major uh, Jewish city, uh, together with Salonika, and, and, and a Greek city, of course. So that's, um, that's my uh, sort of life journey. They say Turks used to be nomads. Um, so <laughs> I think I've played that part. So I've got uh, two small children, five years old and seven, uh, in Brussels, which is where you'll find me most weekends, not all weekends. So um, that's all about me then. Thank you very much. <laughs> Thank you. Um, are there any questions for you, so about relations or anything like yes. that? Yes, I have. <laughs> <laughs> David. Um, I, if I could just inquire yourself about the green uh, finance. Uh, what is the economic return that the bank expects to get from green finance? Presumably it's got a commercial uh, interpretation. It sounds green finance is great, okay. but it's yeah. part of the economy. Well, obviously, the, um, I mean, uh, energy efficiency improvements have returns, economic returns. Like if you change your machine into something more energy efficient, it will, it will uh, in all likelihood, improve your, uh, your uh, production. 
and we have engineers in house actually and we do engage with consultants that will actually do the numbers for you and prove to you that if you do this investment you'll have uh, your investment uh, practically paying back for itself in a few years and renewable energy is obviously um, is a money earner especially now that the PV has reached uh, uh, the same level of uh, cost with, uh, with non-PV investments and uh, the latest is that uh, uh, wind farms are also now uh, they are economical so you don't need uh, the coal or gas uh, and of, of course uh, especially in the case of photovoltaics uh, it's, it's immensely scalable you can put you know, uh, a solar panel on your roof you can have uh, square miles of coverage as we supported the, the largest one in the Middle East in, in Egypt it goes on for several kilometers and that uh, investment will pay for itself faster than, than uh, coal or gas these days. What, so what do the shareholders expect? David I'm afraid we'll have to break this discussion um, off now. Yeah.